My dad and I had an encounter about five years ago. It was by far the most frightening moment I've ever experienced. I'm going to try my best to share with you just how crazy the situation was. We know what we saw and became believers. My family and I had a love for being outdoors. We were avid hikers and my parents even more so when they were younger. They traveled the country with a trailer in tow just to enjoy what each state had to offer. Except for Alaska and Hawaii, I'm pretty sure they visited every state. As my mother's health declined, they sold off the trailer and became homebodies. Something they just detested. Years later, after just having a much needed physical, my dad received some surprising health news. He was now diabetic at the age of 60. And that explains some of his symptoms, namely his poor eyesight and weight gain. He'd been gaining weight since mom died, and more than likely because of his desire for fast food and desserts, his diet was off because he never really cooked and drive throughs were just that convenient. Now I'm not making excuses for him, but I'll just say he never missed a meal. Times like these, you have to be there for them. We've always been close, and since my wife was very understanding and loved my dad too, I was able to more easily keep track as much as I was able to. After a few months of managing medication, blood sugar, and his diet, I was anxious to get him out in the open air for some much needed exercise. Doctor recommended. Pop had dropped several pounds and seemed to be looking forward to getting out on the trails and doing what he always enjoyed. We didn't live all that far from I-81 in the Shenandoah Valley, so I thought to plan a trip to one of his old trail spots. I thought we could both use a break with a mix of hiking and maybe later some camping. We tested the water, so to speak, along a stretch of the Appalachian Trail. In their younger days, he and my mom were really into the outdoors, and we did spend a lot of time on these trails. Our children also love to explore and camp. They're no different than we were. We agreed on Signal Knob. It may have been a little ambitious, but he was feeling a lot better and was looking forward to our trip together. In his heyday, he could have walked that trail in his sleep. It also happened to be one of his favorites. It would be a challenging 10 mile hike, although nothing said we'd have to complete it. The hike to the views alone were worth it. I always loved coming up here. We'd be close to Strasburg. As a matter of fact, some parts of the trail overlooked it. A few hours later, we finally arrived and it just felt good to be out in the open air. I mentioned the open air because my dad had another vice, smoking. He was trying to kick the habit, but with very little success. Loading up our packs, we headed up the trail. I felt like he did surprisingly well for the first three miles. We kept a moderate pace, and I could tell this was just what he needed. He'd smile as he remembered some of the sights and markers. We would stop often, taking a break, and enjoying the view from the rocks. As we made our way down off the rocks, we found a clearing and decided to grab some lunch. I don't think he was too thrilled with all of the health food options I was attempting to get him to eat. Having a good sense of humor while realizing how much his children were trying to help with his illness, he'd jokingly comment, how much rabbit food can a guy eat? Hey, let's grab a quarter pounder at the next exit. Blah, this is awful. Puh. I knew he was joking, but I just had to say it. Okay, Dad, that's what got you into trouble in the first place. Dad? I thought I'd struck a nerve as he turned his back on me. Son, did you, uh, did you hear that? Hear what? It sounded like a growl, I think. As he scanned the forest, he suddenly got very quiet. And as I came to walk up next to him, he looked a little pale. 
I stared at him blankly and then shouted, thinking he was having maybe a medical crisis. Dad! He mumbled and said, shh, shh. His eyes were locked on something. He slowly motioned for me to come forward even more, and I joined him and turned to look in the direction of the woods that he was now facing. Taking off his glasses, he pointed at something. There. What is that? I strained to focus in on what he was seeing. All I could see were trees, big trees, and a giant stump about 20 yards away. Wait. That's not a stump. That looks like hair. And it just moved. What is that thing? But then it grew. The stump appeared to be about five feet high, but now it was several feet taller. The stump littered with leaves and brush now turned around and faced us. Big as in broad, thick and wide, I immediately thought of the time I stood next to an elephant with its trunk hanging down. This thing was several feet taller than I was. I felt so small and insignificant. The same as I'm feeling now. The look on its face appeared aggressive, or maybe irritated. It kind of had a snarl, or maybe even a curled lip. I could see some yellow teeth. They were large. We stood there, motionless. Its eyes were black and large, and then it let out a low growl. There was something about that growl. It almost sounded like an old truck. Very throaty, if that's a word. I almost thought I could feel it. Dad, step back towards me. We need to go, now. I had about six inches on my dad, played football, and probably weighed about the same as him. At his age, graceful he wasn't. He kind of jerked and moved back quickly and abruptly, almost a full retreat. Big mistake. A word to the wise. Never run from something in the wild. It's hands down the worst response. Quite simply, it can outrun you. And if I had to guess, it was probably eight feet tall, and we wouldn't have a prayer. That's when my dad said he had to stop. Whether it was out of outright fear or something else, we slowed our roll, so to say, and I held on to my dad for fear of him going down on any of the rocks or the trail. This thing, it paralleled us in the woods, and as we ran back down the trail for what seemed like a half mile, so here we are, and that gorilla-like thing is just yards inside the wood line, having a tantrum. Now it's shaking trees, roaring, and making some sort of a huff noise, and we're practically frozen solid, again, literally helpless to do anything. That's when my dad snapped out of it and wrestled my arm off him. He looked at me in the eye and he said, Start walking and ignore it. Ignore it? That thing wants to kill us. Son, I've heard a grizzly can cover a dozen yards in a few seconds. If this thing wanted to attack us, it would have done so already. Walk now. Don't run. And don't look at it. Keep your eyes on the trail. Maybe he thought that looking at it was a sign of confrontation. I didn't know if he had something there but it did seem like the animal's tantrum slightly subsided, and so we continued to walk quietly and slowly the rest of the way to where we parked. As we finally got back to the truck, I bent forward and just leaned on the hood. There was no sign of this thing anywhere. Thank God. My dad knelt down on the ground and looked to the sky. He had his hands clasped together, his eyes appeared glassy. I know that as he said a silent prayer, he was actually grateful to be alive. How did you know what to do, I said. Well, I love to read about animals. Mom hated all those books I had laying around. 
most of my reading material was about primates. I remember that apes see confrontation and a challenge when you look directly at them. It's an intimidation tactic. You just remembered that out of the blue? Yeah. I guess I did. Of course, once I realized it wasn't a bear. As I mentioned, it was the most exciting and dangerous experience I've ever had. But I'm not going to let it keep me from enjoying the woods. I will say, I'm not going back to that trail. As a matter of fact, not anywhere near it. I'm not stupid. The valley has a thousand more places I can visit. I just hope that that was a once in a million experience and I don't care to experience it again. My dad and I would talk about our encounter all the time. Sometimes we'd meet for breakfast and he would print out copies of encounters off the internet. And other times there would be books written by what I could only call a Bigfoot historian. He convinced me it was a Bigfoot and we'd share information whenever we'd look around on the internet. And that's how we found your channel. Three years ago on President's Day, my dad passed of a heart attack. I'll always remember the great times. As much as I tried to help, he never really tried to take control of his health himself. Missing your medication and the continuation of smoking, along with bad eating habits, only accelerated his unfortunate demise. I know he missed mom too. As for Bigfoot, my dad was a very private man. And that's why I'm just now sharing my experience with you, out of respect to him. Sitting around having breakfast together, he really enjoyed reading witness encounters from all around the world, but especially like the ones closer to home. God bless.